Welcome to Dave's Creative Cave. I'm your host for the next eight minutes, Dave Thornton. And this is my video review for the film Gold Rush from 1925, a time period known in the movie industry as America's silent era. This film was not only written and directed by one of the world's biggest stars of that time, Charlie Chaplin, but he also played the leading role as his little tramp persona from his other well-known silent films from those days. It is important to note that this was his favorite movie and it's the one that he wanted to be most remembered for. Big names for the movie include leading actress Georgia Hale as Georgia, a saloon girl who the tramp falls for, Max Wayne as Big Jim McKay, Tom Murray as the one at Fugitive, Black Larson, and Henry Bergman as Hank Curtis. The Gold Rush was one of the highest grossing comedies of the silent era and the fifth highest grossing movie at that time period, bringing in more than four million dollars at the box office. Currently today, this film is ranked number 74 on the American Film Institute's website for the 100 greatest American movies of all time. Can you believe that? To be ranked 74 out of 100 over 80 years later. A movie with no color, no sound, no voices, competing with modern movies that now contain all the special effects, color, sound, all the things that this film did not have. That feat is more than impressive. Charlie began shooting this film in February of 1924 and didn't finish until May 1925. This delay was due in part because Chaplin knocked up his lead actress, Lita Gray, who was only 16 at the time. Chaplin was 35. So as to avoid a scandal and possible legal issues, they got married. This sort of thing seems to be the norm for most of Hollywood, even these days, don't it? It is said that Chaplin drew his inspiration for the script from the Klondike Gold Rush, and particularly from a book he had read about the Donner Party disaster in 1886. This is when a group of immigrants were traveling, they got stuck in the frozen Sierra Nevada mountain pass, and the only way they were able to survive was by feasting off the dead, as well as eating their own shoes, which is depicted as dark humor in scenes throughout this movie. So if you're unfamiliar with that story, you might not get these particular gags. They had to truck in over 600 extras in order to recreate the iconic image of the prospectors climbing up the 23,000 foot path which was dug through the mountain of snow and it's also said that people actually died while making this film. Now remember there were no special effects, there were no green screens, and there were no snow machines to produce snow. So scenes had to be shot on location in the same treacherous conditions as the original prospectors faced. This plot is a comic turned romance. So as the story goes, a lone prospector, the Tramp, heads to the Klondike in order to strike it rich in the Gold Rush. He and a fellow prospector alongside a burly fugitive, uh, they get trapped inside a cabin by a storm which plays out in a multitude of comical gags which involved hunger, deprivation, and a bear. He later falls in love from afar with a flirtatious dancing girl from the mining town trying desperately to win her affections. Through a series of comical scenes, things seem to play out in the end for the old lone prospector. Now for me, I am not one for black and white movies, and this is my 
This is only my second silent film I've ever watched. For someone in modern era, I would have to say that these types of movies are more of an acquired taste. The reason why Hollywood is not reproducing silent films today. However, from a creative standpoint, this film has the best of slapstick comic and drama. This movie was so good, in fact, it has inspired past and present filmmakers alike. The Starving Prospector, Hallucinating, That the Little Tramp Was a Chicken. This has been mimicked in cartoons such as Woody Woodpecker, The Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, and even The Simpsons. So did the scene where the tramp is boiling and starts to eat his own shoe, which became a starvation theme gag for cartoons as well, to depict exaggerated starvation. The scene where he puts two forks into two dinner rolls and starts making them dance, this has been replayed in blockbuster hits like Benny and June, A Nightmare on Elm Street, and Meet the Robinsons. This movie was slow to start at first. It took me about five to ten minutes to really get into it. And then I started to appreciate the film for what it was. The only drawback I had is I had to pay really close attention because unlike today's movie with dialogue where you can turn away, listen, and then come back and still know what was happening, with this film that's not the case. You have to watch not only the actors but the scenes as well in order to get the gist of the story. Otherwise, you're going to get lost. And you're not going to. You're not going to enjoy it. The music also helps to add up to the suspense and climax of the scenes. After the slow start, there was nothing I did not enjoy about this film. It was filled with comedy, drama, and a little romance. I even started to empathize for the little lonesome tramp, especially when. The other group in the bar was making fun of him, and the girls tried to play pranks on him. Yeah, felt sorry for him. This is a legacy from one of the most famous stars from the silent film era. This iconic comedy has dazzled audiences for decades and still does to this day. This movie is the most famous of the silent films and showcases Chaplin's talents not only as an actor, but as a writer and a director as well. This concludes my review for Charlie Chaplin's 1925 The Gold Rush. Thank you for watching.